Welcome to Star Wars Action News, helping Star Wars collectors collect better. Hi everybody, Andrew here, and I'm joining you today for my fourth Hot Toy segment to talk to you about the first ever Star Wars figures they revealed. Did you notice the little discrepancy in that statement? Well, if you've been paying attention to the Star Wars Hot Toys line, you'll know that the line was first announced back in July of 2014, then two months later, they revealed their first two figures, Han Solo and Chewbacca, would be available to ship in April 2015. So why did they take so long to come out? Well, I have a couple theories on that. When they were first revealed, there was a lot of discussion online about their facial likenesses, particularly how Chewie looked like a Harry Cornelius from the Planet of the Apes, and how Han looked like John Stamos. Well, personally, I think Han looked more like Danny Zuko, but to each his own, I guess. Now, apparently, Hot Toys heard the feedback and decided to make some changes. To Han, at least. In June, Hot Toys production director and chief painter J.C. Hong shared pictures of a new head sculpt for our scruffy nerf herder, so it's fair to say that this change added to the production time and pushed it back. Of course, that doesn't really account for all of the delays. The first delay was announced in February, pushing the release out to July. Then in June, it moved to early August. Then in July, they said late August. Then in August, mid-September, but then... On September 1st, almost an entire year after they were first announced, I received an email that said that my final flux payment would be, air quotes, processed early on September 4th. So now that I have them, what do I think of them? Well, let's get into that, shall we? Let's start with the walking carpet. Now, there are things I love about this Chewy, and there are things that I'm just not so keen on. First off, let's talk about that head of his. He really does have coconut mouth, which at first to me is fine because in the films his muzzle is rather coconut shaped. But there's just something about the shape here that is just, well, wrong. I'll just go ahead and say it. It's not right. It took me most of my time taking pictures of him before I figured out what. I think it just protrudes too sharply. If you look at the chewy mask in the movies, there's a gentle slope to his nose. Here, it's an almost 90 degree angle and just sticks out way too far. And as a side note, it would have been great if they had given him an articulated jaw. That would have really given him more life to some of his poses. And I, I think that his eyes are just a little too small and beady. But let's talk about the rest of the fuzzball. In fact, let's talk about that fuzz. It's my second favorite thing about this figure. But only when looking at him from the front. His hair in the back just looks like he's wearing a Barbie doll wig. No matter how much I groomed it with the comb that was included, I just couldn't get it to look natural. Oh yeah, they totally sent a little comb with Chewie. What do you get? A Wookiee for Christmas when he already... W sorry. According to the instructions, you're supposed to use the flat side of the comb to tuck the fur, and the bristle side of the comb to tidy the fur. When I first pulled this little thing out of the package, I just rolled my eyes, but... It actually works really well with the type of material that they used for the fur. Unfortunately, I just couldn't tuck and tidy his back hair to look right. But like I said, if you're looking at him from the front, the fur is excellent. The colors used are perfect melding between light and dark brown, and I love the material that they used for it. It's almost pliable and moldable, so you can really get it to hang the way you need it to when he's got his arms up. Another issue with this fur is around his swappable hands. Because the Wookiee has fur on the back of his hands, there's a disconnect between his wrists and his hands. You really have to work the fur in a certain way to cover up that joint so you don't see the obvious gap in his rug. But what Hot Toys really nailed here, and is my favorite part of this figure, are his proportions. His tree trunk legs are perfectly shaped and just look to be massive beneath that fur. And he's got some really gnarly toes that stick out from his feet that look kind of creepy yet authentic to his character. He comes with his bowcaster, bandolier, and satchel, and a headset, which doesn't really fit on his oversized head. And if you ordered the Han and Chewie set, you get the heavy blaster rifle that Chewie wields when rescuing our favorite princess from the detention level. The heavy blaster rifle is the same one that comes as an exclusive with the Stormtrooper set, but it's worth repeating that this gun is amazing. All the moving sights, stands, and loading mechanisms. It's just the attention to detail that I expect to get from Hot Toys. Now, the bowcaster is nice, but nothing too extraordinary there. And the bandolier looks great on him, but unfortunately the pouch doesn't open up, which was a little disappointing. I did find it strange that the little boxes on the bandolier are removable and not glued in place, but I guess that's kind of neat. 
Overall, Chewie is just okay. There are more disappointing aspects to him than I would like, of course, but the sheer size and bulk and the fact that his hair is soft and not sculpted out of plastic do a good job of masking its other flaws, and I don't mind keeping him on display next to his smuggler partner. Speaking of Han, let's move to that figure. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and lead with the fact that this is my favorite Star Wars Hot Toy that I have received to date. Perhaps it's because it's the first human figure in the Hot Toys line, and perhaps it's because three-fifths of my figures have been shiny stormtroopers. But this guy is awesome. His pants, vest, and partially open shirt fit him just right, and the seams mold them and give them a realistic look. And the collar of his shirt actually has a little wire in it, so you can mold it to be up and tight around his neck, or flared out a little bit for that more relaxed, casual scoundrel look. When I was a kid, I thought the coolest thing about Han was his gunslinger belt. I was a fan of old westerns, and it was obvious that Han's blaster was meant for the quick draw. It is a little small for his DL-44 here, though, and the flap that comes down over the top to hold it in place just isn't quite long enough to reach the magnet that holds it down over the grip of the blaster. The belt itself has all sorts of cool little pockets with doodads and greeblies in it, including what looks to be a tiny green soda bottle. There's also a bracket that holds the droid collar on, which is cool that it's not permanently affixed. Speaking of his belt, the only way to take his belt off is if you take off one of his boots which you need to do if you want to put on the Stormtrooper belt that comes with the Han and Chewie set, or with the exclusive version of Solo Han. See what I did there? Because there's, there's, he's by himself, so he's... Ne never mind. Now, I've heard tales of Arnie's troubles removing the boot of one of his Tony Stark figures, so I was a little timid about doing this with this one. But the boot popped off and back on very easily, so I don't feel worried about switching them back and forth several times if I want to display them differently down the road. The likeness of Harrison Ford is really quite good on the new sculpt from every angle. No flashbacks of Grease or Full House with this one. It's a very neutral expression, which works well when posing him to match several different movie scenes. It would have been nice to maybe have an exclusive head of Ford's signature lopsided smile, but now I'm just being greedy. Other than the Stormtrooper belt, which not surprisingly is exactly the same as the ones that come with the Stormtrooper figures, Han also comes with his trusty DL-44 blaster, which has some amazing detail on it. The little holes around the muzzle, the brass ring around the scope, the ribs on the grip, even a moving sight leaf like an old Mauser C96, which was the blaster's original inspiration. Hot Toys went above and beyond with Han's hands. Of course, there's the relaxed and blaster-holding poses, but they also did those same poses with both bare and gloved hands, which is great when you're wanting to have him reenact the shootout in Dock and Bay 94. The thing I don't quite get, though, is the fifth pair of hands that we get. So let's see, there's the bare relaxed and gloved relaxed, bare blaster holding and gloved blaster holding, and then we get what they're calling partially clenched gloved hands. Now, the only thing that these would be good for would be if he were holding the controls of a quad laser cannon turret. Could we maybe be seeing one of those coming down the road to complement their yet-to-be-released Millennium Falcon cockpit display? Hmm. Speaking of quad laser cannons, like Chewie, Han also comes with a headset that he most prominently wears while shooting said cannons. Unlike Chewie, however, Han's actually fits. In fact, remember how I said I wish Han came with a swappable head sculpt? Well, he does come with a swappable hair sculpt. That's close, right? Anyway, you can put this alternative hair piece on him that has a molded groove that the headset just fits into. It's a shame they couldn't have found a way to make Chewie's fit better like they did for Han. The hair is held in place with a nice solid magnet, so there's no worry about him losing his toupee when your oscillating fan turns in his direction. Both Han and Chewie come with the now standard figure bases, which are still rather dull, but it's nice that they put a little wash on them so that they aren't just a solid color. Well, no. No, they're still just boring. Together, these two figures look great. There are many poses you can put them in where they just look perfect standing next to each other. As I've said before, I really like how these initial figures from Hot Toys all run in a theme where you can mix and match them to make several different great scenes from A New Hope. For instance, Chewie looks great standing between the previously relieved Stormtroopers, just like when they first enter that detention level. The only thing that's missing is that Chewie doesn't have his binders to hold his wrists together. It would have been nice to have them included as an accessory, but again, I guess I'm just being greedy. Of course, those binders are coming with the Luke and Stormtrooper armor, which should be arriving soon. Yeah, in case you missed the last episode, I finally caved and ordered that one too. Mainly because now that I have the Han figure, I could try swapping out the head with the Stormtroopers and, well, yeah, it just doesn't work. 
The ball joints aren't the same size, and the Stormtrooper has an unpainted black neck, and you just really can't pose the head right, and it falls off way too easily. Plus, now I get the binders that come with Stormy Luke, right? See, there are plenty of legitimate reasons for me to buy the too short Stormtrooper, right? Well, I guess overall, I'd say pick up Chewie if you love the character, or can't have Han without his co-pilot. It's kind of like having C-3PO without R2. And if you're hesitating on picking up Han, don't. He is scruffy in the best way. Oh yeah, that, that reminds me, did I mention that he has sculpted chest hair under his shirt? He's wonderfully poseable and has raised the bar for the human figures to come. And that about does it for these two. But I should be back very soon with some more reviews as Luke, Vader, and the quarter scale Boba Fett are currently scheduled to ship next month. Thanks for watching this video. You can see full episodes of Star Wars Action News with more collecting news and reviews at SWActionNews.com. We also have thousands of toy and collectible photos in our photo gallery. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. May the pegs be stopped and the Force be with you.